Ein wichtiger Punkt. An important aspect for us in the second phase is assisting blind and partially sighted students with studying a semester abroad, preparing them for a semester abroad and also foreign internships within companies. Because these are within the context of globalization and internationalization, as well as future fields of employment, important components to qualification for our blind and partially sighted students. Malte Oehlmann has just returned from a semester abroad in Salamanca. For a semester abroad, it's important, especially for partially sighted and blind students, to organize things as early as possible. For example, I contacted a person in Salamanca in advance with the help of SZS, through whom I was able to clarify the extent of academic support in the form of materials, textbooks, lecture notes or outlines, and all that kind of thing, and to what extent, if any, a possibility for blind students at this location existed. I would say that especially for the blind, this is of great significance. It makes you more independent and more mobile, and you learn entirely different things in a thoroughly diverse environment in another language, which you possibly don't speak well, and with completely other people. That's why I always say that one should travel abroad, but that goes for everyone, blind or not. It's simply a tremendous experience that one should take advantage of. During my foreign semester abroad in Salamanca, Spain, what I noticed is that there are huge differences in how blind people are accepted in society. For example, in Spain, it's much more a part of normal life to be blind. This was also extremely noticeable to me in Mexico, that blindness was never a topic when I met people. Here in Germany, when I meet someone, discussional topics almost always quickly drift over to blindness right from the start. By contrast, there other things were discussed that didn't have anything to do with blindness necessarily, and I found that very pleasant. SZS is also the contact point for students studying at the University for Technology and Economics and other universities in Karlsruhe. My name is Martin Engel. I'm 23 years old and in my fourth semester studying piano chamber music at the University for Music in Karlsruhe. SZS arranged for me to meet Professor Randalou, the professor for my principal subject, before I began to study here. That was a big help. But now, during my studies, I'm hardly dependent on SZS. This can be seen as positive. Music's not exactly inundated with textual material. You have to read music, play a lot, practice a lot. But it's not like one has to read that many books. This is a Beethoven sonata. For the camera, this is what it looks like. You essentially have the musical notes and all the eventual instructions. Exactly. Everything, simply everything that you need. Musical dynamics, articulation, everything is in here. You read with one hand and play with the other, and then switch. You read fractionally a few bars on the right and then the left and memorize it, and then put it together in your head. That's in effect the whole lot. Third pillar, preparation for professional life. The presentation, the personal presentation in an interview, is naturally for a blind person a very important aspect. He or she cannot see him or herself, how they come across, how they present themselves in front of a committee. We offer weekend courses, fit for the job, as we call them, in which interview scenarios are simulated and filmed and subsequently discussed intensively with the participants. In doing so, the personal demeanor, the communication, the perception of the interview is to be trained, and the individual specifically prepared for this objective. 
Heinrich Niehaus studied business engineering at the University of Karlsruhe. Today, the 26-year-old is employed with the energy supply company EWE. I graduated in March 2008 with a master's degree in business engineering and participated in various training courses that were offered within the context of SZS's employment preparation program. On the one hand, there was an employment application course. How do I prepare my CV material? What does a cover letter look like? What should it contain? What should not be included? And then a particular look at the special situation. How do I package the fact that I have a disability? How do I formulate it? And at this course we were given tips. On the other hand, we also role-played various interview situations. It starts with how do I enter a room? With whom do I shake hands first? This is for someone like me that comes into a room who can't see, very unpleasant, because you don't know if someone has already held out his hand. Is it impolite if I hold out my hand first? Basically, these kinds of situations. We played these kinds of different things through, so that in principle one learned the best approach. The application for employment here was already very special. What I found very remarkable here was that not only the problems were seen as persistent, as I've experienced in other job interviews, but also the opportunities. From the very beginning they realized, okay, Mr. Niehaus works predominantly with the computer, so it seems logical to employ him in areas in which he'll have a lot to do with data banks and Excel spreadsheets. My colleagues really help me out a lot and tell me, for example, it can be very practical things, like if I have a spot on my clothes or tie. Something like this would be very difficult for me to be aware of, and normally people are inhibited. But I told everyone right from the first day it's okay to tell me this or that, and they do it as we agreed upon. It's important that you lay your cards on the table right from the beginning, because many have never had anything to do with blind people or blind colleagues, and don't know how to exactly act around them. If you're honest and open from the beginning, and say I need this, then you make your life and those of your colleagues significantly easier. In order to relax from his professional life, Heinrich Niehaus has an interesting hobby. I've been playing blind football for about three quarters of a year now for FC St. Pauli. It's great as a blind man to be able to play such a complex sport. The ball has rattles in it so that the players know where the ball is. The goalkeeper can see and is allowed to shout out commands. At the midfield line there's also a so-called midfield guide that can also shout out commands and, very important, standing behind the opponent's goal is a so-called goal guide that gives the forwards their direction so that they know where to kick the ball. My name is Julia Bonat and I studied electrical engineering focusing on biomedical technology. I received my master's degree in 2007 and since then have been studying for my PhD at the Institute for Biomedical Engineering. My work here consists primarily of simulations of the human body in the computer in which we simulate the effect magnetic fields have on it as well as attending to students, student dissertations, student assistants, and also lecture and examination support. I'm lucky that I still have remaining eyesight, measured around about 3 or 4 percent. That is not much, but I feel closer to sighted individuals than to blind people. I can't imagine what it's like to be completely blind. I have visual aids, like telescopic magnifying glasses, binoculars, large monitor screens, and I'm superbly supported here at the Institute. Not everyone simply gets this 30-inch monitor put on their desk at their leisure. Even though Julia Bonert was immediately accepted into a postgraduate program at the Institute for Biomedical Engineering because she completed her master's degree with distinction, she still remembers the useful employment application training she received from SZS. I attended a seminar called Negotiations and Composure, or something like that, and the topic was how to deal with compensating for lack of eye contact in a meeting, because obviously it accounts for a great deal in a conversation. 
It's important to know how people in a large meeting, dialogue partners or your boss, are attuned to you. This is something that we visually impaired people are oblivious to. And in the seminar, we found out how we can compensate for it. Other SZS fields of activity. SZS is not only a leader in this field throughout Germany, but it's also an internationally sought-after partner because the concept that we have developed here is unique throughout the world. We've been active in constructing similar facilities in various Eastern European countries. Last year we assisted in establishing a comparable institute at the University in Chisinau, Moldova. We're now currently involved in other projects, here in Ethiopia. We're presently constructing similar facilities on Malta. Moreover, we have a solid network of partnerships with American and Canadian universities so that we may cultivate exchanges for scientists and students. An important aspect of our work is to go beyond university life with our knowledge and experience. We have worked together with the public transportation services in Karlsruhe and have created not only for our students, but also for visually impaired visitors and citizens of this city, tactile public transportation maps for the public tramways. Once a year, together with the University of Linz, SZS organizes the International Camp on Communication and Computers, in short, ICC. This is an important orientation event for teenagers from all over Europe. It is important for potential future students to be informed as early as possible and to exchange information with each other. ICC is geared towards visually impaired young people aged anywhere between 15 and 20. It's a one-week camp filled with workshops, for example, the latest visual aid technology or the latest software, which they can then try out. There are workshops on the topics of body language, communication, job application training and so on. Of course, on the one hand, job orientation is important for our young participants, but also the resulting friendships from the event. They are international friendships that last throughout the years. SZS research activities have a direct correlation with the multitude of services. Thus, scientific papers and research projects address, among other things, the improvement of the accessibility to mathematics, graphics and pictures, Linux and open source for the visually impaired, and the development of a screen reader. However, topics also include continuing education programs for web designers and the creation of websites for handicapped users. Thus, service and research synergy is an essential characteristic of the study center for the visually impaired students in Karlsruhe.